I think it's an absolutely brilliant time to be an architect. We're in a really dynamic, transformative time. With all of the things that we've experienced in the recent number of years, it has really brought about a cultural shift in the way that we approach things. And one of the key things that is really transpiring, I think, from it is that it's people first. We adopt a people first approach and we're really looking to working with the communities collaboratively to achieve really great places for people. The hopes for the new policy are extraordinarily high. It's a terrific document. It has been crafted and worked on and built upon. But it would be wonderful that it's a reference uh, document, not just something that has dust on a shelf, but it would be a tool to kind of dig deeper into the cultural responsibility of architecture. It, there's a lot of things that that embraces places for people. It, it's to do with design, but it's also to do with an attitude. And it's to do with the social values that we have expressed for us through architecture and urban design. What kind of society are we? Beauty is for everybody, whether they own the building or not, or own the space or not. The, the importance and dignity uh, given to the citizen I think is central to uh, the health of any society. The, the raising of building as, a, as a, an, more than an art form, more than a craft, that is actually something we should demand. It's like as if architecture should be a, a human right, that the pleasure of sunlight, of daylight, of fresh air is something that we should demand. We should demand as, a, uh, as a human beings. What was really important about this project, the ESB headquarters on Fitzwilliam Street for us, was that the street was part of the public domain, that the surface, the containment of the street. We talk about architecture as being built skin. It's the, it's the spaces, the public spaces, let's say, that hold the citizen as they walk about the streets in their normal way. But what was important was the rhythm of the doorway on the street, that Georgian architecture is not just a street of brick, it's also a rhythm. We often refer to the beauty of the music of Bach, which is a rhythm of repeated uh, melody, of repeated uh, timing. And so as a, a citizen of this city, as you walk by, that we have reinstated the, the rhythm of Georgian architecture, which is about the doorway, the window, the railing, so that the physicality, what we love about the, the brick is, has taken a huge amount of research. The, the actual size and content of the mortar has taken a amount of huge uh, research and finding, you know, that there's sand from Kildare and Wicklow, that the granite is Irish, that, that people will see that craftsmanship built into uh, projects is still there for people to enjoy. So when you see the mica sparkling in the western sunlight and that this rhythm of 120 metres uh, of city street is a, a gift to the general public. And then the route through, they're making uh, that this block rather than being uh, one continuous block, has this uh, little laneway that's open to the public at certain hours of the day. And then, the, if you like, the, the investment in what was the laneway is now a sun-catching uh, inner street within, within the city. What we really enjoyed was um, making the block more porous, that you could take the tradition, the Georgian 18th century tradition of embedding landscape and gardens into the urban block, that we could do that even within a dense uh, urban uh, building, which is single use, really. It's, it's an office block. So free space is, is also to do with time and memory and, uh, and landscape and imagination, as well as uh, tradition, and, and also to do with how you can give this sense of generosity to the worker. Down below us is an old quarry where uh, kalp was uh, uh, taken from the city. It's just interesting that we're building in an old quarry of the city. We have embedded these courtyards, which brings natural daylight deep into the plan, as well as providing landscape. And each of the, the bars of the building, let's say, is of a dimension 
that allows daylight uh, to penetrate deep in the plan. Working with environmental scientists that we actually have more glass, the lower you come down because the more you're exposed uh, as you go to the sky, the more you're exposed to the sun. I remember there was a meeting when the landscape architect who worked with us on this project and he was describing to the client the approach to the, the roof garden, which was to do with making an ecosystem for certain insects to uh, survive. And somebody was asking the question, well, what is this for and what is that for? And there, there was stones and rocks and things. And he said, well, the bumblebee has to find somewhere to sunbathe. <laughs> And I just thought that was such a beautiful way to describe <coughs> what one needs to think about because it, it was funny but it was also serious and everybody just enjoyed that comment. It, it somehow describes an attitude to landscape and to the bigger world of other living creatures and insects besides human beings. It's also about transforming historic ideas into contemporary ideas. And there's a, there was a beautiful quotation from uh, uh, Albert Einstein recently in the Irish Times, which was describing, um, just to get this right, that uh, creativity is imagination at play. And that's what's really beautiful about the, the discipline of architecture that it takes the ordinary things, the needed things, and transform it. And if they just transform it into building, that doesn't reach the goal and ambition of architecture, which is to find all the other things that were never imagined before, and it's transformed. We love doing schools and it's, we think it's the first public building that children enter. Uh, what we're doing in Grange Gorman feels like a kind of a medieval city, I think, the way that we, we have positioned it. It's a tall classroom block, it has the general purpose uh, space which has uh, outdoor play on its roof and also it's part of the Grange Gorman campus so it means that the children are embedded in a university structure they can have uh, you know they can walk in the park with their their parents to their homes but also they're part of the city and one of the most important things about uh, schools is the chance for parents to form friendships on that doorway on that threshold between city and schools Well, it's a really visionary project set up by uh, Dublin Port Authority, um, which at the larger scale was to do with the reuse of the uh, Audlums buildings, which are a fantastic uh, presence in the city. Um, but it was primarily to do with, um, historically the port was part of Dublin City and has become disconnected and Dublin Port Authority wanted to use culture as a way of reconnecting um, the Autumn's buildings, transforming them into spaces which you could say are really hard to find in our contemporary cities because commerce squeezes out the kind of um, warehouse or the maybe not perfect building where artists and musicians can rehearse and occupy and uh, have their studios. Those spaces are going by the day, are impossible to find. So they had this idea that they would um, take this space, which is in abundance, and try to see how it could be reconfigured to make a, cu a cultural quarter, a cultural hub. And what we found extraordinary working um, with it was climbing up and around these uh, incredible structures, like those silos, they're all made in steel, so you can't really touch them because they're not like concrete silos where, which have been converted into um, uh, museums and things in the past. So it's like as if it was a, a kind of a, an archaeology and some interventions we could make and make new things and other things we just left, uh, left uh, as they were. But for instance the, um, the idea of making a bagging tower, which is bagging flour, uh, which is a concrete building, that that could become an archive and be perfect as an archive. We just found that really exciting. And then the first stage of that that we're hoping to complete in the near future is the Liffey to uh, Talca 
public space. And that's really taking East Wall Road and transforming it into a linear civic space, you could say. And that's something that we've never had the opportunity to do before, to think about um, uh, public space at that scale. But there's a whole theatrical world there of cranes and, and pulleys and conveyor belts and loading and unloading. and It's just incredible. And that will be open, visually at least, to uh, the city. But it also makes a new entrance to the city. So taking one route and thinking about it carefully. And the, uh, Dublin Port have given over a strip of land uh, to, to the city to be able to do this. So that was really exciting for us. You could say it's just designing a road, but it's not. It's making a piece of public space. We're not an island at the edge of Europe. We're in the middle of the Atlantic. I'm, I'm not claiming that territory, but it's just how we perceive ourselves. And when we look at the younger generations of architects, I mean, they're extraordinary. They move so easily through so many different cultures in terms of their fluency in architecture, much more than we did, I think. And, and that's wonderful because that enriches us. I think it's crucially important about how we design our places, the places that we live in, the communities that we live in as well. And I'm really conscious that our expertise in architecture is a really vital resource for us to draw upon while addressing many of the, the challenges that we're currently facing. I firmly believe that Places for People policy and its actions will enhance this resource and will enable us to draw effectively on it, helping to deliver high quality homes, workplaces, public amenities in which our communities can flourish. The National Policy in Architecture forefronts the vital role of architects and built environment professionals in addressing sustainability and social challenges. I welcome the holistic focus on art and craft for all round quality in repairing traditional buildings. The National Policy in Architecture emphasis on working creatively, innovatively and respectfully across boundaries, capturing the values of the new European Bauhaus is key to long term sustainability and well-being. As state architect in Ireland, based in the Office of Public Works, I welcome the new policy on architecture. It will give structure and integration of the poetic and the pragmatic into the evolution of policy in Ireland over the next number of years. And I look forward to linking that into the European-wide policies on architecture that are happening in other countries also. Ireland was one of the first countries in the 1990s to have an architectural policy, and that's been renewed now twice. It's not just talking about the abstraction of architecture, it's the art and science of it and how it practically is implemented. So you can go from high art architecture to architecture that is everyday and they should not be separated out. The National Policy on Architecture is full of great recommendations from the need to actually resource local authorities with good architects uh, to the importance of retrofitting our existing buildings and uh, improving the quality of life in our cities. One way local authorities are going to be able to do that is by a focus on good design, ingenuity and innovation when it comes to architecture. What an exciting day today talking about the new um, architectural policy um, coming along, setting up um, standards and and delivery for um, local authority and how an architect and local authority can, can have a role. And we look forward to work together for the best of the implementation of the policy. This is a great day for architecture. This is a great day for architecture and people. And the Irish Architecture Foundation was, uh, came out of the last policy in architecture. So this being the new policy in architecture, we are so excited to bring this uh, document in its implementation and action and activity to our audience, which is the general public. Architects will really look at things holistically. They will take all of the strands, all of the elements that are contributing to creating a great place. And it's, it's all of those vital things in terms of if we consider what it is a sustainable neighbourhood is. It has appropriate density in the first instance that's sustainable. It's also delivering on diversity, that you get that mix of use and within that architects are really skilled at integrating all of those aspects. And then 
uh, absolutely essential is that design is embedded and part of that. And where you get that mix and that holistic approach, you really create great places. Mm -hmm.